All right, kiddos, we're continuing with part three of our uh, naming and formula writing discussion. Remember, we're working on ionic compounds, uh, which are between usually a metal and a nonmetal, or we also involved polyatomic ions in the last three examples. Um, make sure you recall that the nonmetals are located on the right hand side of the periodic table, and the metals are all of the other ones, well, except for hydrogen. Hydrogen's a nonmetal also. Uh, we talked about determining their ionic charges. When they form ionic compounds, we said the noble gases do not form ionic compounds. Um, the halogens, these guys have a negative one charge when they form an ionic compound. The oxygen family has a negative two charge, and nitrogen, phosphorus, and arsenic would be negative three. Um, over here on the other side, the group one, the alkali metals, have a positive one charge when they form an ionic bond, and the alkaline earth metals have a positive two charge. All other metals we have to use Roman numerals when we designate their charge except for aluminum is always positive three, zinc and cadmium are always positive two, and silver is always positive one. All of these other metals kiddos we need to integrate Roman numerals in the name. Uh, polyatomic ions, there's a list on the back of your periodic table identical to this and you don't need to memorize this list but you need to know how to access it and how to use it. Okay? All right. Well, let's continue on then. Let's try ammonium bromide. Now, this is going to be a positive polyatomic ion with a nonmetal. So, ammonium is really the only positive polyatomic of consequence. Here it is. It's NH4 positive 1. NH4 positive 1. And bromide, well, that must come from bromine. And so that's in group 17, it's a halogen, and those folks have a negative one charge, so that's Br with a negative one charge. Recall that the sum of the charge needs to add up to zero. So ammonium's positive one, bromide is negative one, we just need one of each, don't we? So the formula would be NH4Br. It's as simple as that. Okay, let's try to name one that involves that positive polyatomic ammonium. So NH4 is called ammonium, so we write ammonium down. We do not need Roman numerals for it. It's not one of those metals. And CO3, well, let's find the name of CO3. Let's see, uh, here's CO3 right there. That's called the carbonate ion. So we would just say carbonate. We don't change the ending of the polyatomic ions. We're done. Just ammonium carbonate. No Roman numerals are required, and we don't need to change the ending of the polyatomic. Okay, let's try example 12, and I think I'm going to do a few more from assignment 21, uh, that big homework assignment that's due soon. So here we go. CE. Now CE is cerium. C-E-R-I-U-M. Now that sounds like a metal that I'm going to need a Roman numeral for. It's down here. Sure enough, I do. So, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to leave a spot for a Roman numeral. Now C4H4O6. Now I'm not quite sure I put that on your radical chart, so I think I'm going to add that here at the bottom. You might want to do the same thing. It's C4H4 and it's O6. Okay. And that is 2 negative, and that's called tartrate. It's the tartrate ion. So we're going to end this with tartrate. Remember, we do not change the ending of polyatomic ions, but we do have to figure out the Roman numeral we're going to use for cerium. Now, we don't know cerium's charge. It's a mystery to us. But we do know tartrate's charge. Each tartrate, remember, I said was two negative. So each one of those is two negative. There are three of them for a total of six negatives. Right? Each tartrate's two negative. There are three of them for a total of six negative. That means I have to get to six positive. Now be careful doesn't mean that cerium is two positive. There are two of them. So two of them have to be six positive. That means each one is three positive. So that's the Roman numeral that I will put for cerium. Cerium three tartrate. Now if you could follow me on that one, you can do just about any that I give to you. So let's take a look. Let's do a few more 
from assignment 21, okay? So I think I did some from number one on assignment 21. So we're going to have assignment 21, and this will be continued. If you remember, I did some in an earlier video. I think it might have been the last video. So let's do some from number two. Uh, let's do letter F, okay? So this is 2F. And I give you the name of the compound. It is potassium perchlorate. And we have to, of course, come up with the formula for that. So potassium. Well, potassium is a metal. It's right here in group 1. See where my thumb is? Potassium is K. And you should remember that all members of group 1 have a positive charge when they form ionic compounds. Perchlorate is a polyatomic ion. So let's look for it on my polyatomic chart. These are arranged alphabetically for you. Here's perchlorate right there. It's ClO4 negative 1. ClO4 negative 1. So once again, we need to bring these together in such a way that the sum of their charge equals 0. So if potassium is positive 1, perchlorate is negative 1, I only need one of each. KClO4 is the formula for potassium perchlorate. Okay, let's try letter H. Okay, letter H is rubidium chloride. Now for each of these, you guys can take a minute and try it on your own. You know, you can always press the pause button and then, you know, depausify it and check your work and see how you did. All right, now rubidium's a metal. Rubidium's in group one. It's right there. Remember, members of group one, the alkali metals, have a positive one charge when they form ionic compounds. And chloride comes from chlorine, and that's a halogen, and it's negative one, Cl negative. Well, that was too easy, wasn't it? That's RbCl. Just one of each again. Okay? Let's try letter I. Letter I involves a Roman numeral. So let's see what we have here. We have lead, Roman numeral 2, uh, I almost wrote acetate, it's nitrate. Lead, Roman numeral 2, nitrate. Now, lead is Pb, and I know its charge is 2 positive. I know that because the Roman numeral tells me that. Remember, the Roman numeral tells me the charge of the metal ion. Now, nitrate is a polyatomic. And it should sound familiar. It's one that we use quite often. In fact, some of these you're going to memorize because we use them so often. Nitrate is NO3, negative 1. So we have NO3, negative 1. So lead is 2 plus. Nitrate is 1 negative. Aren't I going to need two of these nitrates? So I have two negatives to balance out the two positive. So to write the formula, I'll put PB. And then since I need more than one of a polyatomic, I put it in parentheses. And then I put the number I need as a subscript uh, to the right of that polyatomic. So we have PbNO3 in parentheses with a 2 on the outside. Once again, that gives me the two negatives I need to balance out the two positive. Let's do one more from uh, section 2. Let's do letter J. And so letter J is tantalum, Roman numeral 5, acetate. As a tate. There we go. I have spelled that correctly. So tantalum is TA, and I know it's 5 positive. Right? The Roman numeral told me that. Acetate. I like writing C2H3O2 negative for acetate. There are two versions of it. C2H3O2, 1 negative, and then CH3COO, 1 negative. This one gives you maybe a better idea of what the Lewis structure would look like. So that's why it's commonly used, but this one's just a bit easier to write, so I choose that one. Either one is just fine. Now, tantalum's 5 positive, acetate's 1 negative. So aren't I going to need 5 of the acetates to balance out that 5 positive charge from tantalum? So I'll put C2H3O2 in parentheses, and I need 5 of them to balance out the charge. And that's the formula for tantalum 5 acetate. Is this starting to get easy for you? I hope so. Let's try number three. Let me do a few for number three for you. I don't want to do all these. I want you to have some fun on your homework tonight. Let's take a look at letter A. Uh, the formula is Na 
HCO3. Okay, so let's see. Na is sodium, so we're going to write down sodium. It's in group one, remember? Members of group one do not need Roman numerals. And it looks like HCO3 is a polyatomic ion. So let's take a look and find it. Oh, there it is. HCO3 negative one. It's called bicarbonate. HCO3 negative one bicarbonate. So I would just say sodium bicarbonate. Now some of you are waiting for Roman numerals, but you don't need Roman numerals for sodium. Remember groups one and two, with a couple of other exceptions, do not require Roman numerals. Okay, let's skip to letter C for number three. And the formula here is CuCrO4. CuCrO4. Now Cu is copper. Now copper requires Roman numerals. It's one of these guys right there. It's in the middle. It's a transition metal, and almost all of these require Roman numerals. CrO4 is another polyatomic. So let's see if we can find CrO4. There it is. It's called the chromate ion. We don't change the ending. We would just say chromate. So copper something chromate. So we have to figure out the Roman numeral there. Now chromate has a charge of 2 negative. So there's one of them. It's 2 negative. That means copper here has to be 2 positive. There's only one of them. So the charge of my copper is 2. So that would be called copper 2 chromate. Okay, let's just do a couple more. Let's see, I just did letters A and C. Um, let's hop down to letter E. This is one of my favorites, Fe2O3. And I would really encourage you to pause and try this one on your own first. Okay, Fe is iron. All right, let's find iron on our periodic table. It's right here. It needs Roman numerals, doesn't it? So I'm going to leave a space for Roman numerals. O is oxygen, but remember the second element, the negative element, will always end in "-ied". We do change the ending of these um, monatomic ions, the one atom ions. So this becomes ox -ied. not oxygen -ied. just doesn't sound right. So we call it oxide. Now, what the heck is its charge? Well, oxygen we know is two negative. So we have three of these. They're two negative each. That gives me a total of six negatives for all of my oxygens. That means I need six positives for my two irons. The Roman numeral is not six. There's two irons here. So that means each one has to be three positive. So that guy's called iron three oxide. Okay? All right. And let's hop over to letter I. And letter I is BA, parentheses, NO3, 2. Okay, BA is barium. All right, barium is an alkaline earth metal. It's in group 2. I do not need Roman numerals for it. NO3 is a polyatomic. Have you memorized that name yet? Let's see, NO3 negative 1 is called nitrate. So this is... Barium nitrate. And we're done with letter I. All right, that gives you a really, really good running start on your homework. Um, if you take into consideration the ones I've done from an earlier video, go back and review the videos. Use your textbook. Practice these. Um, just don't copy down what I've done and leave it at that. Work at these. They take a little bit of practice, but once you learn how to do them, um, they really become pretty easy and your assignment becomes busy work. Now I'm going to do a few more uh, after the next video, so if you need more help, I'm going to do a, uh, video number four on naming and formula writing, and then I'll probably do a couple more, either from assignment 21 or maybe even assignment 22. So keep on watching and hang with me. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.